Welcome everyone once again. In the last video, we had a discussion around compute services. And in this video, we will completely focus on storage services of Google Cloud Platform. So let's quickly have a look at the learning objective of this video. So we are going to start with the overview of GCP Cloud Storage Services. After that, we will be having a look at Cloud Storage, which provides us the object storage capability. Then we will move to the persistent disk that provides us blob storage capability. After that, we'll have a discussion around cloud file storage, which is cloud file as a service. And after that, we will have a demo on storing data in the cloud storage. And finally, we will close the session with a discussion around use case, when to use which storage service. All right, so let's move to the overview of GCP cloud storage. So the GCP storage services, what it has to offer for us. So storage services add persistence and durability to the application. So what does this mean? Persistence and durability. Let's go and understand these words in a more correct way. Let's suppose we have a mobile application or we say that we have a mobile phone and there is a micro SD card that you insert in this mobile phone. So why do you add this micro SD card in your mobile phone? So this SD card you are inserting so that you can keep your videos and songs in this memory card for a longer amount of time. So persistence means to persist something into the memory card or the storage device. Then what's durability then? So durability means suppose after one year or two years, suppose your memory card gets corrupted, your all the data will be lost, right? So the durability means the ability to stand or damage proof or saving it from the damage, right? So the storage device, what it does, it provides us persistence and durability to our application. Now, storage services are classified into three types. These are object storage, block storage, and file system storage. And GCP also offers you storage services that can store unstructured data, and folders and files, right? So we will have a closer look into all of this going further. So now let's have a look at Google Cloud Storage. So this Cloud Storage provides us unified object storage for variety of applications. These applications can store and retrieve the objects through a single API, okay? So that means you have a storage device and you can write the data in this storage device by using this api and also if you want to retrieve this data you have to use the api and this api is provided by google cloud storage service so gcs can scale to exabytes of data meaning it can store up one bits of data to infinite bytes of data you don't have any restrictions on storing the data the amount of data that you are storing you have to pay according to that and you don't have any limit on storing the data and uh, gcs is designed for 99.9999 percent of durability that means that the chances of losing your data is approximately nil you will not lose your data with the google cloud stories gcs can be used to store high frequency and low frequency access to data. So in a typical applications, you have uh, data that you use it very frequently and there are also some data that you don't use it very frequently. Let's say that there is a life insurance company and the users don't need the data every day. This data is accessed on demand. Maybe yearly once or twice you need this data. So GCS offers you to store the structured data and the unstructured data as well as high frequency data to a very low frequency data, which adds cost saving capability. Now the data can be stored within a single reason, dual reason or multi reason. So you know that Google Cloud Platform is spread across many regions and zones, right? So if you want to store your data in a single reason, you can very well go ahead and do that. If you want to store that in the dual reason or let's say in a same continent, then you can also do that depending on your security requirement and your local government regulatories. And you can also use to store your data in the multi-regions. Now let's have a look at the storage classes and their types. The first in the list is high frequency access. And the class used for high frequency access is standard class. So high frequency access means the data that you want to use most frequently. The most common storage class 
that are used by developers and optimized for low latency or reduced latency means that uh, the time taken for retrieving the data is very very low and this is very commonly used easy to access the second in the list is low frequency access and the class is called near line class that is meant for data that is accessed less frequently typically for the data that is accessed less than a month for those kind of data we use the near line class and the third in the list is lowest frequency access or cold line class this is meant for data that is accessed very least frequently and typically you can say that the data which is accessed once in a year for those kind of data we can choose the cold line classes usually this cold line frequency is used for archival purpose or for the records that has to be kept for some minimum amount of time for example a transaction that you are doing today maybe that has to be saved for four or five years so in those kind of scenarios we will use the cold line classes right now let's have a look at persistent disks so as discussed earlier the cloud storage service provides us the option of accessing the data through an api and in the persistent disk data is accessed using a block storage now the persistent disk provides reliable block storage for gcevms what does that mean that means that persistent disk is used when you have a google compute engine vm running and you want to attach a storage capability to this vm in those kind of scenarios you can go for persistent disk so this is your vm and this is your persistent disk which adds storage capability to this vm okay now the disks are independent of compute engine vms what does that mean is that suppose you want to terminate this vm tomorrow does that mean that your data whatever there was there in the storage will that also be terminated the answer is no that means that your vm can be terminated but your persistent disk will be as it is it is separated from the vm the next is each disk can be up to 64 tb in size and that's a lots of space 64 tb is a very huge size and this is the size of one persistent disk that can be attached to a particular vm you can attach as many as you want persistent disk can have one writer and multiple readers that is one of the unique capability of persistent disks it supports both ssd and hd storage options you can use the ssds where your frequent operations is io that is io intensive applications can use ssds and finally the pd is available in three storage types that is access it zone wise or regional or local so that's all about the persistent disk let's move to cloud file storage so like the block storage and object storage google also provides us the file store system managed file storage service for the application or you can say legacy application it's a managed file storage system okay so let's say that there is a legacy application which is an on-prem application right and it delivers nas like file system interface and a shared file system so this nas like what does that mean is network attached storage like so in a legacy application what happens which is on-prem it will be having a storage or it will be accessing the data which is coming from different networks right so it's a network attached storage that can be replicated in the google file storage it's a centralized highly available file system for gce and gke that is google compute engine and google kubernetes engine mostly use this file store cloud storage now exposed as a nfs file share with the fixed export settings and default unix permissions so this capability makes your application feels like the application is running on the on prem but actually it is on the cloud file store file shares are available as a mount point in gc vms so that makes it highly available it feels similar to how your data is accessed when you are on prem on prem applications using nas like advantage of the file store that we already explained now the file store has an inbuilt journal storage redundancy for data availability so like the other storage systems it also has the journal capability to reduce the redundancy for the data availability now the data is always encrypted while in transit 
so whenever the data is in transit it will be encrypted and that adds the security and that is one of the best feature of file store so to summarize the file store we can say that the on-prem applications which require a file storage type of system when any application that has to be migrated to the cloud this kind of settings will be required for moving the application from on-prem to cloud and the google cloud file store provides us with such kind of capability so that it is easier for migrating your application without any hassle okay so now let's have a demo on google cloud storage and in this demo we are going to create a bucket and store images in that particular bucket so i am on my google cloud console and i have selected the project as technotab that we created in our last video if you don't have any project you can just go ahead and create the project but i will be selecting this technotab only and i am going to create a stories so in the search box i will type stories and i will select the cloud stories there is no storage bucket available here so we have to go ahead and create a storage bucket so this storage bucket is nothing but your top level hierarchy in the google cloud stories and inside that you can have multiple folders and inside that you can have data so there are few steps that are involved in creating cloud stories and we will walk it through you have to pick up a name that is globally unique that means that you don't have any pre-existing name available for this particular bucket i will name it technotab that's my channel name technotab stories okay and continue so the next thing that we will get is choosing the location type for this particular bucket so there is a multi region highest availability across largest area if you choose the multi region your availability for your uh, bucket will increase and it is up to 99.95% sla and if you choose a dual region it will give you high availability as well as the low latency across two regions and you can select any of these two regions and there is a reason that is also called as a local that means that lowest latency within a single region that means you will not be facing any kind of latency in the data you will get the data very instantly and that you have to select only one reason for your purpose okay so here you can select any depending on your choice i will choose a reason that is very local to me and that is in asia mumbai okay let's continue now you have to choose the storage class that we discussed earlier what kind of class you want standard that is used by all the developers where you have a frequent access of the data if you want to access the data very frequently or you want to store the data very frequently you have to select this standard or if you want a uh, monthly access in a month you are using that data only once in that case you can choose the near line class and there is a cold line class which is the data which is accessed once in a year or quarter or it's used for the disaster recovery in that cases you can choose the cold line there is archive class that is used only for the purpose of long term preservation of data and if you see that the cost of choosing that classes will vary your cost of using the data so for a standard it's free for near line it's uh, 0.01 gb per month cold line 0.20 and archive 0.50 it is the highest right so here i will choose the standard and continue and the next step is to control access to the object enforce public access prevention on this bucket you can select that i will leave it default so i will leave this a uh, uniform and i will click on continue and after that you have to select the protection tool and you can select any retention policy you can read and select whatever you want that is best suited for your type of data for me i will choose it none after that i will click on create and it will just take some moment and my bucket will be created so i am in my bucket and inside this bucket we have the techno tab storage bucket and inside that i will create a folder and i will say techno tab images okay and now i have this folder i will go inside this folder and i will try to upload any file so i will click on upload file i will go to the picture that i want to store i will store the logo open and you can see that the logo.png file is uploaded 
and that concludes the demo in this demo we saw that how we can create a bucket what is the location the storage class the public access and the protection type that we choose for our bucket and we also saw that how do we upload anything in this particular bucket so that concludes the demo and now let's move to the use cases so that we can understand where we can use which kind of the storage services in this video we have discussed three products of google google cloud storage the persistent disk and the cloud file store okay so you need to figure out when to use which service and that will depend upon your knowledge on how do you describe these three services so the google cloud storage is basically the object storage type and it is scalable durable and a very long term storage it is centralized for frequently and infrequently accessed data and we also uh, saw that it can be accessed by using an api right and the persistent disk is a block storage system where you attach gce and gke vms it is uh, used where there is a requirement of dedicated storage for a particular kind of vm and based on sdd and ssds and the file storage basically is a file system storage type wherever there is a requirement of nas like shared file storage with standard unix permissions in those kind of scenarios where a legacy application has to be migrated to cloud in those kind of scenarios your file storage will be very much helpful so with that we are concluding session 3 if you have not subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe and Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.